okay so today we'll start with our uh, fifth practical which is a uh, to study speed control of dc shunt motor using armature voltage and field current control method so there are two methods of controlling speed of dc shunt motor one is armature voltage and second is field current so both these methods you have to use then measure rpm and uh, rpm means speed you have to measure and plot the graph of speed versus armature voltage in one k experiment and in second speed versus field current so these two experiments we have to perform so this is uh, the practical number 1 which you have to perform otherwise first four practicals are the simulations so we have simulated on the two simulation softwares we have tried to simulate them on uh, two rather there are three so on three softwares we have tried to simulate them and these practicals you have to perform in the lab so today we'll perform it on the virtual lab which are uh, developed by the uh, ministry um, uh, of human resource and uh, they are available in iits for freely use to all the engineering students amongst india okay so um, this dc shunt motor practical one the aim is to control the speed of dc motor using two methods one is armature voltage and another is field current control you have to measure the speed and then you have to plot the graph of speed versus armature voltage in one case and in another case speed versus field current so what will be outcome of this so outcome of this is you will be able to understand speed control characteristics of dc motors the theory of dc motors there is one unit in your syllabus fourth unit of dc motor of whole unit is there so in that we'll see detail uh, working construction principle various types of dc motors numericals equations and speed control methods and start uh, starters so all these we are and applications so all these we are going to see in that fourth unit but just to uh, perform the practical whatever basic knowledge is required we'll discuss that okay so uh, after performing the practical your ability to understand the speed control techniques for dc shunt motor will be enhanced so uh, i'll show you first uh, uh, simulation how this dc motor works okay so i'll stop sharing this screen and uh, i'll share another screen so is it visible to you yes avi is the new yes, screen visible to you ha okay so dc motor principle is whenever a, in one line you can state that whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field it experiences a force and the direction of force is given by fleming's left hand rule then you can see in this uh, picture two magnets are there permanent magnets south pole and the north pole these two magnets are shown and there is one armature conductor so this is an armature which is placed in this two magnets north and south pole and that armature square armature it is connected to a battery dc battery through this commutator and brush arrangement now the current will flow i uh, uh, this is a small video i'll show you and then we'll discuss 
What is that? At that position, we can determine mechanical force with applying Fleming's left hand rule. Let's do that. To do this, spread out your left thumb, forefinger, and second finger so they are all at 90 degrees to one to another. So if forefinger is a line in direction of magnetic field, that is, from north pole to south pole, and second finger is aligned in direction of the current in the left side conductor. Then thumb indicates direction of mechanical force. This is clearly upward here. So if forefinger is a line in direction of magnetic field, that is, from north pole to south pole, and second finger is aligned in direction of a current in the right side conductor, then thumb indicates direction of mechanical force. This is clearly downward here. Do this upward and downward forces, turn, tends to rotate in clockwise direction. From that explanation, we can come to conclusion that here in this model, we can see that whichever conductor comes near South Pole, experience upward mechanical force and near North Pole, downward mechanical force and do this continuously forces mechanical turn rotate even if battery is not connected particularly dc motor rotates at the same principle like this elementary model instead of single turn in dc motor we have mountain turns on major coil and instead of two poles there is number of poles installed okay so i hope you have understood the principle of uh, this DC motor. Whenever the conductor is placed near south pole, it is experiencing a force in upward direction. Whereas the conductor which is placed to north pole, near north pole, will experience a force in downward direction. So it produces, there are two forces acting on this conductor. One is in upward direction, another is in downward direction. So couple of force in opposite direction. So they produce a torque and the motor rotates in a particular direction. So this is the basic, simple basic principle of DC motor. Now we'll move to our discussion. I hope uh, you have understood uh, uh, what is the principle of DC motor. Now again, we'll come to our presentation. Yes, is second screen visible to you? Yes, sir. So what you understood in this is, I think uh, there are two windings or you can say one armature winding is there and another two permanent magnets are there so in case of dc motors which is we want to operate a shunt motor so dc shunt motor series motor or separately excited dc motor in these types of dc motors field winding is provided so this field winding you can see in this picture one field coil is there and here IF is written. So this field winding is uh, serving the purpose of the permanent magnets. So the permanent magnets and an armature coil. So that you have seen in the picture. So instead of permanent magnets, this field winding is there. So this field winding is um, providing the task of permanent magnets okay so it is providing the flux and the armature coil is this so that second coil which is shown it is this armature winding or armature coil so these two coils are there so uh, for this armature winding we are applying here armature voltage va a suffix stands for armature so armature voltage we are applying this is LA and RA. So these are the inductance and resistance of this armature winding. As it is a winding, what do you mean by winding? Winding is nothing but it is a coil. 
so it is a coil so coil means a simple copper wire you are winding it there also when you are winding it it will have a inductance and since the wire is of made up of copper it will have its own resistance so this particular winding will have resistance and inductance so they are shown here along with this armature so this is the armature and this is the shaft of that particular motor so this is symbolic representation of dc motor this is actually separately excited because this is the shunt wind uh, field winding which is uh, connected separately in shunt type this is connected across this armature winding so that is the shunt motor so whatever it may be we are uh, interested in few equations so uh, all these we'll see in uh, detail in um, theory but here you will require this va va if you will apply kvl to this particular loop you can find that va is equal to this eg plus ia ra ia is the current flowing through this armature so ia ra drop so va minus ia ra will be equal to this eg what is this eg eg or uh, usually it is referred as eb even in few books you may find it as eg or in few books you may find it as eb so that that term is the back emf so back emf means the generated emf due to the speed so since the motor is rotating that produces again some emf and that is in exactly in opposite to that of the voltage which is applied across this armature so this va minus ia ra will be equal to eb back emf so this is one equation then this back emf is also proportional to phi into speed where this phi is nothing but the flux produced by this field winding so this phi is proportional to if that is the field current flowing through this field winding and the torque developed that torque is proportional to phi into i means this ia is the armature current and phi is proportional to if means torque is ultimately proportional to ia into if so torque is basically depending on this armature current as well as on field current now this some rearrangement of these equations you can substitute and you can find this omega or speed that is equal to va minus ia ra divided by phi means k into phi that is the proportionality constant or this phi is proportional to if so you can substitute that if so omega is equal to means speed is proportional to va minus ia ra divided by if so that means speed is directly proportional to va that is armature voltage and speed is inversely proportional to if and these two methods we want to implement for speed control right so we have got this equation omega or speed which is proportional to va minus ia ra drop whereas ra is very small so this drop you can neglect so this v, uh, speed is directly proportional to va that is the applied voltage across armature and it is inversely proportional to if speed is inversely proportional one upon if it is proportional to one upon if means inversely proportional so the motor speed can be varied by armature voltage and field current so there are two methods now both these methods are very important because in first method you can change the armature voltage and you can achieve the variation in speed from zero to rated speed so rated speed what do you mean by rated speed it is the speed at which uh, or that corresponds to the rated armature voltage rated field current and rated armature current that is known as the rated or base speed and all these rated values 
they are mentioned on the motor so there is a flap on a motor and on that flap it is mentioned what is the rated voltage what is the rated current armature and field and what is the rated speed so usually uh, 1400 rpm is the rated speed of the motor which is available in lab or it may be twice of that 3000 okay so that is the rated speed so with variation in va means va you can change from 0 to some value let us say 220 volts so from 0 to 220 if you are changing the value of armature voltage then your speed will change from 0 to the rated speed that is 1400 rpm right and opposite is the case of field current as you can see here speed is directly proportional to va so as va is increasing speed will increase and for if it is inversely proportional so if you are reducing the value of field current then the speed will increase and this method usually it is referred as a field weakening method why it is field weakening because we are weakening the current or field or we are weakening means we are reducing the value of current so that the flux linkages will weaken or they will be brought down so that is the field current control method and by reducing the field current you are reducing the field flux linkage so as you are reducing the flux field flux linkages the speed will be more than the rated speed so that means by field control method you can go beyond 1400 rpm so as you are reducing the value of if you will find that the speed will increase more than beyond 1400 so 1400 1500 1600 maybe up to 3000 or 2000 okay so the difference you got between these two methods one is armature voltage control in armature voltage control by controlling the voltage from increasing the voltage from 0 to maximum you can increase the speed from 0 to rated speed that is 1400 so maybe 0 100 200 500 800 and then 1400 okay so this will be the variation if you are varying the armature voltage if you are weakening the field current that means you are reducing the value of field current so initially it was 1 ampere you may make it as 0.8 ampere then 0.7 ampere 0.6 ampere 0.2 ampere and so on so as you are reducing or weakening the field current your speed of that dc motor shunt motor will increase beyond the rated value that means it will increase from it will start from 1400 say at 1 ampere it is at 1400 so if you will make it as 0.8 ampere then it will increase to say 15 or 1600 if you are reducing further to 0.5 ampere let us say so it may increase to 1800 or 2000 rpm and so on so forth so got this difference yes avi yes sir ah so one more thing i want to tell you that the armature voltage control it is the nomenclature is armature voltage control and not armature current control okay and field current control not field voltage control so you uh, keep in mind these things it is armature voltage control and field current control now this armature voltage control it is also referred as a constant torque operation because torque is directly proportional to phi into i and phi is proportional to if field current that means torque is proportional to ia as well as if now in this armature voltage control method we are keeping field current to a constant value armature current to a constant value so your torque will remain constant that's why it is a constant torque operation and by varying the value of va you are changing the speed so that's why it is also referred as a constant torque operation 
with a variable speed and in second case field current control method as torque is proportional to ia as well as if and you are varying if so that means on the cost of torque you are changing the speed meaning is your torque will start reducing as you are reducing the value of if as if is reduced so torque is proportional to ia into if if you are reducing so as you are reducing if your torque will reduce but your speed will increase so on the cost of torque you are increasing the value of speed that's why this is also referred as a constant horse power operation okay so i hope it is clear to you what is armature voltage control and field voltage control yes in this diagram you can see in case of armature voltage control on left side this uh, at the middle uh, 100 it is shown is the rated speed okay that is the 100 percent your rated speed that is let us say in our case that was 1400 rpm so this 1400 rpm is the rated speed and below that you can operate at a constant field current armature voltage you can vary and your torque will vary your power will vary and your speed will increase right so this is a constant torque operation and this is constant power operation that is the field current control in which you are you are reducing field current your armature voltage is remaining constant so the power is constant so it is constant power operation and on the cost of torque so torque is reducing whereas speed is increasing and in second case uh, that is armature voltage control your torque is constant and speed is increasing uh, with voltage so i hope your ideas are clear then we'll go for circuit of armature control method so in armature control method as its name suggests we are uh, uh, connecting one variable resistance in series with an armature so this is the armature of the dc motor in series with that we are connecting here a variable resistor so we can change the value of this resistance so that we can change this supply voltage applied to this particular armature winding so va will be controlled so as va is controlled va that equation is there omega equal to means speed is proportional to va minus ir by k phi uh, or k into if Uh, so depending on the variation of voltage we can change the speed that is the armature control method and second is the flux control method in which the field winding if this field winding this armature winding it is connected directly to supply and for field winding now we are changing its value of current which is flowing through this armature uh, sorry field winding with the help of this variable resistance or variable potentiometer arrangement and by varying this field current we are changing the speed because that uh, speed is inversely proportional to this if so this is the circuit which will be using and practically this is the circuit diagram which we are using for performing the practical so here is the um, supply voltage 230 volt dc supply as it is a dc motor we are using dc supply voltage this is the field winding and this is the armature winding mm -hmm. as shown now we want to measure armature uh, field current so field current value if we want to measure field current that's why we have connected one ammeter over here and this is the field winding along with that we have connected a variable resistance in series with this field winding okay so this resistance we can vary and we can ultimately change or vary the field current value and that value we can read it on this ammeter and for this armature winding 
we want to measure armature voltage so we have connected here a voltmeter across this armature so that that voltmeter will read the voltage value across the uh, armature voltage applied across armature and that we can vary by connecting a variable potentiometer or variable resistance in series with this so by varying this value of resistance we can change the applied voltage across this armature of the motor so both the experiments we can perform that's why on the same setup that's why we have shown here two potentiometers so for first method if we want to change armature voltage we will keep this potentiometer at a particular value so that field current will be having a constant value at a particular value and will go on varying this potentiometer which is connected with the uh, in series with the armature so we are varying armature voltage at a constant field current and will get variable speed that you can measure with the help of tachometer tachometers are the meters which are measuring speed in rpm so tachometers are of two types one is analog tachometer and another is digital tachometer so analog tachometer you can directly connect to shaft of that dc motor and uh, the reading of that uh, will be available on the uh, dial so that is one and another is the digital which is non contact type so instead of connecting it to the shaft of dc motor by remote con uh, controlling you can measure the speed so in that what is done is uh, usually a white tape is pasted on the shaft of the dc motor and this uh, remote control remotely controlled uh, um, tachometer it is uh, um, uh, radiating the ir light infrared radiation and that infrared radiation will detect that particular white uh, spot or white um, um, uh, stick and that will be detected and the speed will be measured so that is the non contact type of uh, tachometer which measures speed so in both the cases you can measure the speed after measuring the speed you can note down the readings for different values of voltage you can measure the speed you can uh, make note of voltage versus speed and then you can plot a graph of armature voltage variation and speed of dc motor so that is one part of experiment and in second part of experiment you are varying the field current so by keeping armature voltage to a constant value armature current to a constant value that means this second potentiometer which is connected in armature that you will keep it at a particular value so that this will be constant and you are varying this field winding potentiometer so that your field current will vary and after with variation in field current again your speed will vary that speed you can measure with the help of tachometer and you prepare a table which will read the voltage uh, sorry uh, current field current and speed so these you can plot a graph so i hope i think uh, we are moving out of time so we'll move fast so um, usually uh, this is the circuit diagram in which one starter is uh, shown so what is this uh, use of this starter so as you know the um, voltage equation va armature voltage it is equal to eb plus iara from this by rearranging these terms you can find the expression of ia so ia will be equal to va minus eb or eg divided by ra that is resistance armature resistance so initially the value of eb eb is the back emf which is proportional to speed initially speed of the motor is zero so if motor speed is zero eb is zero and va if you are applying suddenly 220 volts ra value usually it is very small in case of shunt motor it is usually of 1 ohm 
so whatever 220 volt you are applying divided by 1 ohm resistance as eb is zero so it will lead to a ia to a very high value so ia is very high so as torque is proportional to ia that means speed is also proportional to ia so your speed will immediately boost and it may cause damage mechanical damage to the motor your shaft of motor may get damaged or bearings in the motor may get damaged so that will give you uh, damage in the mechanical damage in the motor so in order to avoid that what you have to do instead of applying sudden 230 volt dc we are applying it gradually so how to apply it gradually so that is with the help of the starter so starters are nothing but it is a uh, combination of resistance just like your uh, fan fan speed regulator um, you are you are changing the speed of fan by regulator so the same uh, technique is used in this starters initially the uh, resistance of the starter is kept high so that the applied voltage will be very small and then gradually that value of resistance is reduced so that the applied voltage will start increasing and sudden voltage will not appear which will not cause sudden rise in the uh, current ia and which will not give the mechanical damage so uh, this is the starter in modern uh, types of uh, type of drives we are using the electronic control power electronic control so we have got scr silicon control rectifiers mosfets so igbts so we can control uh, the voltage with the help of control converters and with the help of these control converters you can apply a gradual increase in voltage from 0 volt to maximum volt and that is referred as a soft start because you are applying the voltage applied voltage is gradually increasing so you are starting the motor with a slow speed otherwise if initial current is very high it will start with a high current so i hope you understood the concept of this starter soft start uh, i think we are uh, running out of time i will stop this meeting i again float the meeting because we have not completed the practical yet so we'll complete it and then we'll stop today's uh, lecture okay so uh, within 15 minutes because i'll require 15 minutes